Hello and welcome to another Supermap iDesktop tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to import data to and export data from Supermap iDesktop 9D. So let's get started. So this is what we are going to do in this tutorial. First, we are going to talk about the GIS data sources. Next, we're going to see and demonstrate how data is imported and what formats are supported. And finally, we are going to talk about exporting data. Let's start with data sources. So data acquisition is the first and also the most important step for constructing a GIS system. So naturally, it is also something that involves a high cost related to manpower and raising finance. So that's something to keep in mind, and we can therefore conclude that data is the lifeblood of a GIS system. So these are the various data sources that can be used with iDesktop. First, we have map data that can either be scanned paper maps or electronic ones. Then we have remote sensing image data from satellites. Then we have field survey data, that is the data collected by field personnel using professional equipment. Then we also have digital data, such as a yearly survey for a country's statistics. And finally, we have simple text reports that can be used as a data source. So quite an exhaustive list of different types of data that we can work with. So there are generally two parts to a data acquisition procedure. First, the data is gathered, and then it is processed upon to make it more useful than it is in its raw form. We can download some commonly used data from the internet, but it might be incomplete, and some high precision data might be expensive. And these here are the other three ways that we can gather data. For data processing, we have two examples over here. Paper maps would be scanned and vectorized, and electronic maps would have a special process applied to them for extracting the required data. So let's move on to the next part of our tutorial. We will now talk about and demonstrate how and what types of data can be imported into iDesktop. So let's go ahead. These are the two types of data that we can import into iDesktop, vector data and raster data. Shown below each of these are some popular types. The next slide will show a more exhaustive list of supported formats. For vector data, the integration approach has to be import. And for raster data, the integration approach can either be import or open. Now, the reason why we do not use the open integration approach for vector data is because it doesn't allow the manipulation of files since they are opened as read only. So, for us to be able to manipulate the data, it is required that we use the import integration approach. Now, let's demonstrate a simple import of raster data. We're going to open a simple JPEG file for this purpose. So to import a JPEG file, we're going to right click here on data sources, and we are going to say new file data source. And this folder here, the folder called data, contains all the files that we are going to be using in all the exercises of this tutorial. These files will be made available to you along with the tutorial to download so that you can follow along. So let's go ahead and create our data source. Let's call this example.udb. So we're going to go ahead and say save. Now, there are two ways that you can import data into your data source. The first is to click on the arrow where it says data import under the start ribbon. And it will show you all the formats that can be imported. The other is to right click on the data source that we just created and say import data set right here. So we are going to go ahead and use the second method. Let's say import data set. So we are going to click on the plus icon right here and we are going to go into the JPEG folder and we are going to select this image.jpg and say open. Next we are going to leave everything as default and we are going to say import. And there we have it. Our image has been imported into our example data source. We can double click on it to show it in the window right here. And this is how you import a simple raster data into your data source. So the thing about importing an image data set is that it gives you some measure of flexibility over merely opening an image data set. So let's look at that flexibility. If you right click if you right click on this image data set right here, we will see that we have a copy option, an export option, close option and delete and rename options. Now, if we had merely opened this image data set, we wouldn't get these options. So let's go ahead and see that. 
So this is our data folder right here. We're going to pick up this image.jpg file and we're going to drag and drop it into iDesktop. Let's open this up. Let's right click here and see the options again. Now, as you can see, all of those options have been grayed out. So that is the difference between opening raster data from import and from open. So these are all the formats that are supported by iDesktop's import function. We can have anything from a simple bitmap image to ArcGIS files. If the format of your data is not supported in iDesktop, a third-party software can be used to convert it into a format that can be imported. So please go ahead and repeat what we just did and continue with the rest of the tutorial after it. So let's go ahead and import a CRD format file. So let's go ahead and remove this existing data set first for purposes of clarity. There we go. So this time we're going to use the start ribbon here to import our data. So we're gonna say data import and we are going to say auto CID right here. And then we are going to go into our main data folder, select the CID folder, and select the lightning plan.dwg file. And we're going to say open. And we're going to do this twice. First, we're going to import this file as a CAD data set, and then we're going to import it as a simple data set type. So let's go ahead and import it as a CAD data set. So we're going to say import. So there we have it. We have a single file that has a CAD icon right here. So if we render it on the map here, we can see that it comes in as is. It opens up as it would in a computer-aided design software. The thing about importing a CAD file as is, is that it is going to maintain its original structure, but we are not going to be able to run any spatial analysis on it. So let's go ahead and remove this. We will say delete data set, okay. And then let's import with the other option. Data import, AutoCAD, select the same file, say open. And this time we're going to say simple data set. And say import. So this time as you can see, we, we have four data sets instead of one. We have a text data set, a polygon data set, a line data set, and a point data set. So let's go ahead and render these one by one. So let's drop them all on. Right then. So as you can see that they are separate data sets. This means that we can manipulate them how we see fit. They can be individually altered and we can run spatial analyses on them. So let's summarize the differences between these two imports. So with a CAD data set import type, the point line region and text data sets are going to be stored together, whereas with a simple data set import type, they are going to be stored separately. The CAD data set type is going to import the original CAD style, while the simple data set type is not going to import the original CAD style. Finally, the CAD data set import type does not support spatial analysis, while the simple data set import type does support spatial analysis. Please go ahead and repeat what we just did and continue with the rest of the tutorial. So let's talk about importing data that is in GIS format, such as MapInfo, ArcGIS, MapGIS, and others. So for this exercise, we are going to do it together, and we are going to import a .ship or .shp. So let's go back to the start ribbon, say data import, ArcGIS, we are going to go back to our main data folder, select the 02 ship folder, and select the .ship file, say open. So over here, we are going to leave everything as default and say import. Let's render this, and it's as simple as that. So let's talk about importing vector data and attribute tables. So these files are going to be in Microsoft Excel formats, that is .csv or .xlsx. So these are the two things that we have to take care of when we import these files. We are going to check first row as field info, and we are going to check the import spatial data checkbox. Let's say import data set, add, back to the main folder, Excel, and building coordinate .xlsx. We're going to say First row as field info, check, and import spatial data, check. So over here, 
we are going to select the coordinate fields. So for longitude, we're going to say X, and for latitude, we're going to say Y. And we don't need the attribute field. We're going to say import, and there we have it, the building coordinate sheet one. So we are going to go ahead and render it right now and see what it looks like. So it's just a bunch of random point data set elements. So once this is done, we're going to go one step ahead and we're going to open the building code.xlsx file and we're going to take one column from that file and append it to the corresponding columns in the first file. So let's go ahead and do just that. So let's go ahead and import the other file. We're going to say import dataset, add, building code.xlsx. Let's say open. For this one, we're just going to select this checkbox here since this file does not have any coordinate data. So we're going to go ahead and say import. Now before we append anything, let's go ahead and examine the data in the original file. We're going to right click and say browse attributes. So these are all the attributes of this file. What we're going to want to do with the appending procedure is that we want the building codes that correspond to these building names after the Y column. So let's go ahead and do that. So we are going to go under data and under data processing, we're going to say append column. Now here under append field, we're going to say building code. And over here, both under target data and under input, we're going to have the same join field. So we're going to have those as building name and building name. We're going to go ahead and say, okay. So let's close this here, first of all. And then let's go ahead and browse the attributes now. So there we have it, the building codes have been taken from the building code sheet file and appended next to the Y column. So there it is. So now let's look at the render. What we want is to show the points that we just appended on the map right here. So we're going to do that by creating a thematic map. We're going to right click here on the layer. We're going to say create thematic map. Here we're going to say label map, uniform, we're going to say OK. So there we have it, but we see that we have names over here, but we don't want those. We want the codes. So we're going to go into the thematic map manager under properties. We're going to change the expression to building code. And there we have it. The building codes have been appended next to the building point elements in the thematic map. Please go ahead and do this on your own so that you have more practice with it. Now let's move on to the third and last part of this tutorial, which is exporting data to other formats. So for this last exercise, we're going to do these two things. We're going to export a vector data set into .ship format, and we're going to export a raster data set into the .sit format. First up, we're going to open these two files. Let's say import data set, add data, dot ship import let's say import again add data 05 and let's open this image say import right let's go to our dot ship file and let's say data export now to change the format of the file we're going to click this icon here which says advanced we're going to check result type and we're going to say ArcGIS shape file. We're going to select an export path. Let's change that. Go into our data folder, create a new folder, and let's call it export. Say OK. OK again. And let's say export. Let's do the same with the image file. We're going to say export advanced result type SIT image file export path exports say OK export so let's go into our exports folder and see the exported files for ourselves so 
So there they are, the image.sit and shanxi.ship. So that is how you export a file in Supermap I Desktop. Okay, so that's all for today's tutorial on importing and exporting data. For more information, please turn to the help document or contact us directly. Thank you.